Perhaps one of the most frightening aspects of the post 9-11 security environment is in the area of torture. In democratic, compassionate societies like Canada, the very idea of torturing suspects detained by the states is abhorrent. It is unjustifiable, illegal, and above all, it is immoral. Despite this, during the past few years, we have heard American politicians, members of the legal community, as well as members of the public call for the torture of terrorist suspects if it results in information that can be used to enhance national security. How can we even consider using torture as a legal mean or a legal tool and at the same time to be to, and claim and to continue to claim that we are a civilized democracy? How can we consider such immoral and illegal techniques and then condemn human rights violations abroad? Torture and the use of information obtained under torture violates Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedom. <laughs> Most importantly, it demeans all Canadians as human beings. Technically, despite the torture, the abuse and the abuse and mistreatment of suspects, the world is no safer, nor is the threat of terrorism reduced. The statistics regarding terrorist activities that took place since 9-11 prove what I have just stated. Secrecy. It seems to be taken for granted that security requires secrecy. But to what degree do we need this secrecy? And for what purpose is it really used? From the outside, it is difficult to tell. We are told that we have to trust our government agencies and believe that they deny access only to truly sensitive information. We are also told that we have to trust that they do not withhold the truth from us for other reasons. It seems that every time the veil of secrecy is lifted a tiny bit, of course, against government wishes, we see a truth that was hidden not because it affects security, but because it confirms what the government and its agencies spent so much time denying. Just to give a, a, a concrete example, we were eventually, after a court battle, we were eventually given access to some of the redacted material from just O'Connor's uh, public report, which was blacked out because it was deemed um, that that portion of the report deemed to be uh, or deemed to contain information vital to national security. That's what we were told. Only to find out later that much of, of this information showed that CSIS knew early on that the Americans wanted to send me to the Middle East where I could be interrogated through torture. Up until the release of these re blacked out portions of the report, the government, and especially CSIS, has always denied that they knew in 2002 about the existence of the rendition program where terrorism suspects are sent to other foreign countries for the purpose of extracting information under torture. In my opinion, if CSIS had acknowledged early on the mistakes it made, it could have earned the trust, the support, and the respect of many Canadians. I think that one of the most important lessons to be learned through the public inquiry is the need for responsible oversight for our national security organizations. Since 2001, we have seen a huge increase in security spending, but very little on oversight mechanisms that would ensure that our national security organizations were responsible, accountable, and ethical. Over two years ago, just as Dennis O'Connor released the first report from the Commission of Inquiry into my case, a few months later, he released his second and final report in which he recommended the creation of a comprehensive oversight agency to watch over the national security, act, uh, security activities 
with the RCMP and other security organizations. A lot of Canadians don't know, by the way, that CSIS and the RCMP are not the only departments or only agencies that are involved in national security related uh, matters. There is about 10 or 8 others. Uh, some of them belong to foreign affairs, others belong to uh, the Department of National Defense. And that's why Justice O'Connor in his report clearly um, um, said that this, this uh, oversight agency, because of the integrated nature of the, this information gathering, that should oversee not only the RCMP but other departments as well. Unfortunately, here we are two years later, our national security agencies still operate without the benefit of a comprehensive and credible oversight agency as was recommended by Justice O'Connor. As Canadian citizens, we need to be able to trust that our national security organizations are also accountable to us as people, as individuals who, who also need their protections as much as our nation does. No fly list. A few months ago, the American government has demanded that Canadian airlines hand over the personal information of passengers who take flights that pass through US airspace on the way to southern destinations. Their intention, we are told, is to prevent certain known or suspected terrorists from boarding an aircraft where they may jeopardize the lives of passengers and others. This proposal will allow the American government to intercept and force the landing of planes that carry passengers who are deemed a threat to the United States. As a side effect, it will also provide the US with more data about specific Canadian citizens. Data that will remain, as we all know, in US security databases indefinitely to be used for whatever purposes they want. We have put a huge amount of money into our own border security. Like it or not, Canada has already established its own no-fly list, which was developed in close cooperation with the US. We are told, however, that our no-fly list contains the names of no more than 1,000 people compared to 700,000 people. In, in, in the US. But much like the US list, there is very little that we know about what names it contains and for what reasons individuals have been flagged. Worst yet, once an individual finds out that his or her name is wrongfully on the list, there does not seem to be an expeditious way to have it removed. So Michael and Kelly, maybe your name is there right now. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> in my opinion, our list, like the US list, fails us in its secrecy. We, we can know nothing about it, but that it exists. And we can guess little about it, apart from the likelihood that, like its American counterpart, it is similarly, similarly flawed, containing names of individuals who have done nothing wrong. The American list has sounded the alarm bell to stop US bound flights based on such threats as innocent children and elderly. And if I remember correctly, one time a US senator 